Hello everyone, today we're going to take a look at my full workflow on creating an exteriorlistic render in Enscape. Make sure to stay around until the end of the video since that's when you'll find some of the most helpful tips. Alright, so to get started we have a very simple modeled house without any materials applied to it or any surroundings modeled. You can get the file with all the settings from the link in the description. Before we get started on applying materials or lighting, if you have watched my previous videos you know that I like to set up the composition as my first step. I will start this video with the default Enscape settings since I see most of you are starting out from there as well. First things that we want to do is to turn down the field of view maybe to something like 55 degrees and we will also change the perspective to 2 points view. We will change the time of day to a morning sunlight since that is the look that I want to go for in this render and I want to be able to tweak the settings according to that. Alright, so now that we have chosen our angle, we can save it as a camera view by using our F key or just clicking the view management icon in our Enscape tab and then clicking the create view icon in the same tab that we opened up. I will go to the visual settings once again and I will tone down the sun brightness to around 10% or I guess 8% works fine too and we will turn the rendering quality up to ultra and if that slows down your PC don't worry about it just turn it up to ultra whenever you're taking the final render if you can. And finally for this stage we will take off the clouds completely which will make the sky look like a white to blue gradient which is fine because I don't think we will end up using the default Enscape sky in the end anyway. So if you work as an archivist artist, in most of your projects you will have your materials already assigned from the company or the architect that you got the project from. In this instance I have more creative freedom and I want to go for a color palette that contains really soft shadows that complement each other. If you're wondering where I get my materials from, feel free to check my Instagram where I posted free sources for PBR materials and make sure to follow since there will be a lot more content coming out from that page. Alright, so the way I like to assign materials usually is from the foreground and up. So we will begin by assigning materials to our street. I don't want to use any kind of road texture that has too much cracks or is too irregular in that sense. Instead, I want to go for a very clean look. I know that the Enscape material library offers something similar to what I'm looking for, but I have some material that I have downloaded in my resource file, which I feel more comfortable using since I kind of know what to expect because I've used it before. So to load our asphalt material, we're going to create a new material in SketchUp. Firstly, we will put its correct size and align the texture correctly onto our surface and after that we will modify the bumps and the roughness of the material in the materials tab. I am not really looking for real life dimensions, I just want to make sure that the division line between lanes can be seen from our angle of the camera and the reason behind that is because I think it gives more context to the surroundings and that's one of your responsibilities as a 3D renderer. After that, we will apply materials to our sidewalk. In this instance, I will use the pavement from the Enscape library, which I think works well here, and I will apply concrete texture in the bumps of the sidewalk. Next up, we will just apply grass in this area, and we will come back and work on the landscape on this part as well in the later stages. For the path blocks, I want to apply concrete material but I want them to kind of look like a white polished concrete so I will tweak the color in the SketchUp window to kind of achieve that look through these options. We will also apply the water texture on our pool and we will put some tiles from the Enscape material library alongside it. We'll apply it in the canal as well which might not be visible from our angle but that's still fine in case we want to change the angle later and we will apply concrete material in the side of the little canal too. Alright, so now I think we're ready to apply materials to our house exterior walls. So for our exterior walls, I was aiming to use colors, something close to this color scheme and have different colors between the ground floor and the first floor. 
I'll apply the material to the first floor first, even though I said I like to go from the foreground up. And I applied a color from the color library, which I changed through the hex code option in the material editor that Enscape offers. And I also turned down the roughness for it as well to make it a little bit more reflective. I went with a plaster texture in the ground floor and added something close to a soft beige color on top of that texture. And I added a normal map and adjusted the texture size for it as well to fit the scene and to fit the look that we're going for here. I think this looks nice and the colors complement each other quite well, but you can experiment with other materials as well. I'd be curious to see what renders you get out of this SketchUp model, so feel free to send them if you're part of our Patreon. Something that I noticed while applying the materials on the exterior walls is that they're missing metal topping and adding that it will make the modeling more realistic since it will be modeled by one of the ways that this kind of house would be constructed in real life as well. And as a tip, always remember while you're modeling that you want to think how every part would be constructed in real life as well. That way your modeling will be as close to reality as possible. And for the sliding door and the extruded part right here, I will apply a wood material from the Enscape material library, which I know it's supposed to be for flooring, but I still think it looks cool in this instance as well. You might go with another variation, it's completely fine as long as you like it. I will also tweak the length of the planks because I think they look better, thinner and longer instead of the default settings that the Enscape has set for this material. I tried to cut out some parts because the video was going on for too long in my opinion and I thought those steps were kind of obvious and if you want to live stream where you'll be able to see my full uncut workflow, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button to let me know. If this video gets 1000 likes, I'll make sure to go live and explain the whole process to you in detail. For these outer fences, we're going to apply some white weathered wood, which I believe looks good and I will configure this material by myself since I don't have the maps for this texture. I'm only going to make the material more reflective by lowering the roughness and I don't think the bump maps matter as much since our camera angle won't get this fence up close. I will apply a metal material to these chain fences, which I took from the metal topping with the eyedropper tool from SketchUp. But it turned out later that I had to change that up since both of the objects were getting the same kind of color and I didn't want that for this render. We also need to add glass material to the windows and tweak the material of the frames a little as well. As one of our steps, we want to populate this scene with vegetation and work on the overall landscape a little bit. Until now the scene looks kind of dry, but after this process, I think we will slowly come to life. For our vegetation, I will go for a tropical type of scene, which basically means that most of the high vegetation is going to be palmas. For this, we will use the Enscape Asset Library, which includes a good amount of variations. So I will select 4 types of palmas, which I will arrange in a few different places and I want to put most of them in the surroundings or in the backyard of the house. In fact, I want to put only one small palma in front of the house. So we will also add a person that can help with the composition of the image as well, as with giving us an idea of the overall scale of the building that we are taking the renders off. I will choose this one since I think it has appropriate clothing to the rest of the scene and it doesn't draw unnecessary attention with the color of his clothing. What I also want to do is add some more diversity in the foreground of the landscape. To do that, I want to create an irregular surface within the grass surface we have here. And we will create the new surface by using the freehand line tool so the new surface looks as irregular as possible. Within the new one we created, we're going to apply the pebble material from the Enscape material library. And we will turn on the displacement which will make it more three-dimensional and more realistic from the angle that we're looking from. On top of the pebble, we will put some medium height plants and I will choose three different types of vegetation in this area. I will go with a regular bush, a fern and a feather reed grass. We will arrange them in a regular way so they look more natural 
and we will move them a little bit so they're not aligned perfectly with one another since they wouldn't be able to tell that they're different types of plants from the angle that we're taking the render from. We will apply the same pebble material to this part right here. We will add the same three plants as the other area, but this time we will add a new plant. So for this new plant, we will do something unusual. We will load up these two palmas that we used before, but we will totally resize them and give a new look to them to match what we're going on from here. So as you can see, no one can really tell that it's supposed to be a big palma. It's always good to experiment with the assets and what you can get out of them. So don't be afraid to use plants that are categorized as interior plants too. Just put the vase part inside the ground and it won't make much of a difference as long as it suits the scene. We will also add some rocks in front of the house and add some needle grass around it. Maybe the needle grass isn't the best choice here, but I will leave it at that for now. We can also add a mailbox in front of the house near the road. I think that can have a cool effect to make this look more like a house that actually has residents inside. We will configure the materials on the mailbox we imported from the SketchUp warehouse and we will make the metal part a little more reflective and we will make the wood look a little lighter. We can also add a few exterior lights in the house, which I probably won't light up in this render, but I still think they would look good in this instance. We will choose some from the lighting category in the Enscape Asset Library and we're just going to place one near the entrance and another one near the other window. We will also add some surrounding houses from the Enscape Library to block the horizon line and give us more context on the overall area. Remember when you do this in other projects as well, try to choose the houses that are close to the style of the house that you're rendering. That way the whole area doesn't look weird and the house that you're rendering doesn't look too different from the surroundings. I think we can also add two solar panels on top of the ground floor. We can get them at the Enscape Asset Library too. And as you can see, there's plenty of objects that we can use from the Asset Library. And I love the fact that Enscape keeps updating it and increasing the quality of the assets itself. We will also add a street light from the street props category in Enscape and we'll place it near the road. I will place this in the left side of the image so it doesn't get too much attention on the render composition. Let's add a car on the right side of our camera view to have some movement going on. And I'm going to choose a car from the Enscape asset library. And I'm looking for something that doesn't catch too much attention like this one right here. It has pretty regular color and pretty regular form. So it's perfect for what we're looking for. Remember, just like our composition and our material configuration with this point as well, I don't want to overpopulate the scene and make it complicated. I want to keep it clean and easy for the viewers to direct their attention to what I believe is important in this image. So as far as lighting goes, our main source of lighting is going to be HDRIs. HDRIs help our renders in two different ways. The first one is through giving us a background for our horizon, as well as giving us a realistic light source for our renders. I have a few HDRIs in my resources folder that I use from time to time. And if you want to download some HDRIs for yourself as well, I will leave a link in the description where you can get plenty of them for free. This one is fine, it's just that I'm looking for one that brings out some type of morning light. I'm going to try another one, so let's try this one first, even though I think it kind of has a harsher and more dynamic sky as far as I remember, but let's give it a try. Okay, so it's basically what I expected, so I don't like it that much, and I don't think the lighting of this one suits what I'm going for in this image either. So let's try this one, even though I know it's going to be kind of hard to cover the background of it since the HRI was taken in an urban area with high buildings and a lot of surroundings. But let's see if we can get a good rotation point. Okay, so I found a good rotation angle that suits the lighting and the background of the HDRI as well. And I just think it looks quite good and it fits what I want to go for in this house. Alright, so now that we have modified the HDRI lighting to our liking, 
Sometimes, even though it is a daytime render, it is common to see the exterior lights lit up, but for my render, I'm not going to do that. Okay, so for the final visual settings, we will make a few minor adjustments. We will turn up the saturation to 107% and we will leave the color temperature a little bit on the blue tint. We will completely remove the vignette and we will leave a little chromatic aberration and we will change the sun brightness to 12%. We can also turn the shadow sharpness all the way down to 0% since I like the shadows to be soft in most of my renders. All right, so this video has gone longer than I expected it to. I just want to make sure that I'm explaining my thought process while creating this render. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, check out my Patreon, and I will see you in the next one.